How's it going there? You ever wonder what the deal is with your check engine light? Why is it that it just seems to go on and off at will with a mind of its own? And is it urgent to get your car fixed right away if you have a check engine light? Are you damaging your engine by continuing to drive? Why is it that everybody tries to fix it with premium fuel or a bottle of fuel injector cleaner? Would that even help? If these are the questions that keep you up at night, then stay tuned because you will learn everything you ever wanted to know and probably more than you ever wanted to know about check engine lights. So stay tuned because this is very serious. So as you probably know, your car has dozens of different sensors and solenoids and all these components that not only help keep it running, but a lot of them also are used to help control and lower emissions. And depending on the age of your car, you will have uh, sometimes very few of these things and usually in 1996 and later cars or OBD2 cars, which I'll explain soon, and those are the only, car, the only cars that I actually mess around with, you, you can have a lot of these components. And what will happen at some point if you're a driver is you'll be going along and you will see a check engine light come on. And what that means is the computer has detected that one of these components is reporting some type of feedback that is abnormal, out of the normal range. It could be that there's too high of a voltage detected. It could be there is something out of position, too many degrees out of its normal position. It could be that the computer is trying to turn a solenoid on and it doesn't detect that that's happening. There could be hundreds of things that the computer could detect from these sensors or solenoids that could report some out of range value. And it's really not all that unlike when your computer crashes or a program crashes and you get an error message with a certain number assigned to it. And that's actually what the car's computer will do. It's going to do what's called throw a code when it detects some type of odd situation. And these codes, there can be hundreds of them because the codes will be specific to a particular component or system of components in the car. But within each component or system, there can be dozens of different of these diagnostic trouble codes, DTCs, within those components. A idle air control valve can have a too high a voltage detection too low voltage detection, out of position error detection, all kinds of these things just, just for one component. Now typically in your older vehicles, this will immediately set a check engine light and this DTC is going to be some kind of two digit number that a technician will be able to pull from the computer, uh, code 33, a code 42, something like that. In your 1996 and newer cars, it'll generally be a letter followed by four digits for the DTC, P0301, something like that. Now, just because the computer throws a code doesn't mean necessarily that your check engine light comes on. In most newer vehicles, unless it is a very serious code, the situation has to actually occur on two consecutive drive cycles in order for the check engine light to come on. So what actually happens is, let's say that your EGR valve is not in the right position or it doesn't seem to be opening. So the computer will throw a code, uh, what would an EGR, uh, 0407 maybe something, I don't know. But the computer will detect something with this EGR valve and it's going to put this in memory. You won't get a check engine light yet, but basically it kind of puts this thing on probation. Now, you go to the store, you turn off your car, you go and do your stuff, you come back, you turn on the car again. This is another drive cycle now. You get back on the highway, EGR valve is called to come on at some point, same failure. Well, now that's twice in a row. The computer knows that something is wrong, so it will now set a check engine light. The next thing that most people do is they hope it goes away. Some people try to fix it with fuel injector cleaner, uh, premium fuel, stuff like that, but uh, eventually you find those usually don't work and you make a service appointment. And while waiting for the service appointment, the check engine light goes off. So you think everything's okay, so you cancel your service appointment. And of course, as soon as you do that, it comes back on again. What's the deal? So the thing with that is, and again, this mostly applies to your uh, OBD2, your 1996 and later cars, but what happens is when the check engine light is on, the computer is also keeping an eye on it to see if 
the problem doesn't happen anymore. And after so many drive cycles, usually it's quite a few, maybe 20, the computer, if it notices that this problem has not happened in the last 20 drive cycles, it'll turn the check engine light off. But it keeps it on a pretty strict probation during this time. And when it turns the check engine light off, for maybe the next 20 to 30 drive cycles, if this code happens even one more time, just one more time, it'll turn the check engine light back on. And that's why it seems to come on and off for a lot of people sometimes. Now, if you get the check engine light on and it turns itself off because you did enough drive cycles, in some codes it, it has to be as many as 40 drive cycles, in some it may be the next drive cycle, but once it turns the check engine light off, it keeps this in memory, but then after a large number of drive cycles, it can actually say, you know what, looks like things are okay, and it will actually erase it from memory, and then the whole process starts over. You have to have two consecutive drive cycles before it actually turns on the light. So this explains kind of the on-off phenomena with a check engine light. So now you know a bit about these check engine lights and why they would come on and off and some of the complexity of them. One of the, the common questions is, is, is a check engine light Serious. If I get a check engine light, should I immediately get uh, service on the vehicle? Um, doesn't usually seem like the vehicle is affected in any way, so you know, is it a big deal? Well, the, it can be. There are a couple of reasons why a check engine light could be a, a very serious thing. One of them is if the check engine light is flashing. If you have a flashing check engine light, which is usually caused by a misfire, that can be pretty serious because it's trying to tell you that some engine damage could result because of the serious condition that it has detected. Flashing check engine light, you should get it serviced right away. Some of these DTCs can be because the engine is detecting a rich condition or too much fuel going through the exhaust. And, and these can be serious because if that is happening, then it is very likely you will experience premature catalytic converter failure, and this is a very expensive repair. So those are a couple ways that this can actually be serious and damaging to the car. Most of the DTCs, honestly, uh, the biggest deal, the biggest concern is if you are a penguin or a polar bear because probably your vehicle is doing something to increase emissions. So at the very least, you certainly want to get them checked out as soon as possible. On the other extreme, obviously a lot of these check engine lights don't seem to affect the drivability. It's very rare to get a flashing check engine light. And if you don't do anything about it. The, the worst case scenario is that most likely you are doomed for an emissions inspection failure at some point. So depending on your state, uh, out here in, in Denver, Colorado, they have the speed pass system. So it's entirely possible you could have a check engine light, go by the speed pass, they don't detect any unusual emissions, and you're just fine. You could drive indefinitely with a check engine light in that way. But in a lot of states, and sometimes you get random selections, you will have to go to a service facility and have an actual actual drive test done on your vehicle on a dynamometer and in most places, I'm not familiar with all of them, but in most places if there is a check engine light, as soon as the technician sees that, that is an instant failure. So that's the other reason why you'll want to get a check engine light taken care of. In some places it depends what the check engine light is, but in most places check engine light failed they don't even have to drive the car. Speaking about the emissions test, one of the other things that very often happens is you take your car to the emissions place and no check engine light, car's running great, you're feeling pretty confident, and lo and behold, your check engine light comes on during the test and they fail your car. And you think that they must have broken your car because it was fine. This actually happens. In awful lot. So what happened in that case is, remember about the two drive cycles? Did you notice the last time you saw your emissions test with the drive test, they start the car, they drive it slow, stop and go, they take it up to highway speeds for a while, then they accelerate, decelerate, then they turn the car off, and then they turn it on again and repeat the test. Two drive cycles. Each of these drive cycles that they are doing are specially designed to test every possible component, solenoid, sensor in the engine. And remember, if the first time they drive through this cycle something is wrong, the engine will throw a code, but it will keep it in memory, won't turn the check engine light on. 
But then they turn the car off and turn it on again and do the same thing. So they are doing two consecutive drive cycles. Remember, that is where you would get the check engine light to come on. So basically, they didn't break your car during the test. They discovered something that was already broken. That explains why many people find that they get a check engine light coming on during the emissions test, because they are trying to do that. One other myth about check engine lights, at least I think it's a myth, um, this conspiracy or whatever you want to call it, a lot of people claim in chat rooms and stuff when they try to help you with your check engine light that a lot of manufacturers put certain mileage triggers for the check engine light so that the check engine light will come on to bring the car in for a scheduled maintenance or uh, something to that thing, a, a tune-up or something like that. And as, to the best of my knowledge, this is totally not true. I think these guys are mistaking a check engine light for a service required light that does come on in some vehicles for maintenance intervals and things. But as far as a check engine light doing that, I, I do not believe that that is the case. First of all, um, I have yet to see a DTC, a diagnostic trouble code, that says that the coolant needs to be changed or something like that. If you can find one, hey, I'll, I'll change my mind on that. The other thing is, can you imagine how angry customers would be from a manufacturer if they were in the midst of an emissions test and the check engine light came on, so they failed the test, and it turns out it's because you had to get a oil change or you had to get a um, coolant change or something like that. For those of you that are do-it-yourself inclined and you get a check engine light and you want to fix it yourself,